There's an old village in Japan that's recently garnered a lot of fame as being a cursed village. With a lot of stories surrounding the area, including that of a man who was burned alive by carjackers, it's no wonder why it's gotten this dark reputation. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a service that I've really come to enjoy. I've been getting their scents every month for a while now. Scentbird is a service that sends you scents like these each month. Scentbird is really changing the game when it comes to how people shop for and discover new fragrances. It's great to give yourself a little bit more individuality and find something that really suits you. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. You can pick what you want each month as well. They have all sorts of perfumes, colognes, and even a lot of unisex options. You'll get a month's supply of each one, so you can try out a bunch without committing to a huge bottle that could cost from 300 to 500 bucks at the store. You've got famous brands here like Prada, Gucci, Versace, and even a lot of indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. This month I got Fuck Mondays by Confessions of a Rebel, Magnificent Bastard by Grooming Lounge, and Worthy by Mudo. I'm gonna have to say I like Magnificent Bastard the most out of the three. I mean, not only do I like the smell, but I also really appreciate that they named it after me. So why don't you go ahead and try it out and see which ones you're into. So scan my QR code and use DT2 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Using my promo code, it's only a little bit over 7 bucks. Give it a look. The Inunaki Tunnel, the Inunaki Village. The Inunaki region in the Fukuoka prefecture of Japan is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire country, with multiple real-life murders, spooky stories, legends, and historical horror taking place there. It's said that you'll hear screaming and howling at all hours of the night throughout the small region. And, scariest of all, the region supposedly exists outside the confines of the law. It's said that this village, during the Edo period of Japan, was officially sealed off from the rest of the country with the government wanting no part in governing it. Many reasons have been given as to why. You got demonic cults, blood rituals, cannibalism, black magic, you name it. It's been said that after 30 people were slaughtered during one of these rituals, the town was finally sealed off once and for all. From that point onwards, roads were cut off to the village. A sign reading, the Constitution of Japan does not apply beyond this point, was even placed at the entrance to the village to warn anyone who might be brave enough to try and venture in. The Inunaki village came to be during the early Edo period. It's said that even now, persecuted and mistreated peasants choose to live in exile and cut all bonds with society. It's said that the villagers still live there to this day, but after hundreds of years of demonic rituals and constant inbreeding, they've become quite different. If you've got the guts to venture out to this location yourself, it's said that the village is full of traps and insane villagers that will chase you down and kill you with axes and sickles. Not to mention, there's no phone service, so you're not going to be able to call for any help. Given that this area is supposedly outside the reach of the government, the police wouldn't help you anyway. That's why they say that nobody who has found the real, mythical village has ever come back alive. The name of the village, Inunaki, can be translated as Howling Dog, which is said to follow an old story from the village. Even now, you can still find dog statues throughout the ruins of Inunaki, connecting to its heritage. That old story goes something like this. A man in the village had a pet dog that would just not stop barking. One day, he lost his mind and killed it. Shortly after that, both that man and his entire family was murdered. Little did the man know, his dog was only trying to warn him of the approaching killers. A real historical Inunaki village is on the official record, listed as existing from 1691 to 1889. The original Inunaki did well for itself. When it was established, the town was known for producing ceramics and manufacturing steel. After that, its coal mines became even more profitable and a castle called Inunaki Gobekkan was founded in the late 1800s, sparse ruins of which are still visible to this day. Then it merged with the nearby village called Yoshikawa and over time merged with even more villages to become the modern Miyakawa city, making Miyakawa the true modern state of the village. The original location of the old village itself was completely destroyed when a dam was built on location and flooded the whole thing, leaving nearly nothing left behind. The original residents are said to have relocated to the nearby Wakita area. Despite these records, many people will say that this isn't the true Inunaki village from history. It's simply the official account made to hide the real truth. Then, some people say that the building of the dam was actually done in order to hide the true history of the village once and for all. Most of the ghost sightings and horror stories surrounding Inunaki actually take place in an old tunnel leading into the village. 
While the current tunnel was built in 1975 and still sees a lot of daily use, the old tunnel has been completely abandoned. This site is well known enough to birth a horror movie in 2019 called Howling Village, which uses the tunnel for much of its setting, and a horror game called Inunaki Tunnel that same year. The horror of the tunnel isn't just something of legend. This reputation comes from much more real, recent, documented events, the most famous of which being a brutal murder case. December 7th, 1988. A 20-year-old man named Umeyama Koichi was waiting at a stoplight near the Inunaki area, going home from work when he was approached by several young men. The men told him, We need your car to pick up some girls, so quit acting tough and get out. As anyone would, Umeyama refused to simply hand over his car. So the men attacked him, took control of the car, and drove off with him. Driving to a secluded area, they began to beat him once more. Somehow, Umeyama was able to escape and run out into the road. He tried to flag down some passing cars, but nobody would give him the time of day. The group of men were able to find him and capture him once again. They decided to throw him off of the Konda port, but he hung onto the fencing as hard as he could and they couldn't manage to get him to go underwater. While one of the men finally felt some remorse and said that they should just give up on this, the leader of the group disagreed, saying that this man was going to die. They then threw Umeyama into the trunk of his own car and beat him with wrenches, cranks, and any other tools that they could find. They wanted to toss him off of the Rikimaru Dam, but they feared that the body might float up to the water's surface, so they decided to burn him. Feeling that burning him would make him impossible to identify, they stopped at a gas station and filled up some plastic bottles with gasoline, saying that their bike had broken down. Then they dragged him out to old Inunaki Tunnel. They poured the gasoline all over his head. Knowing what was about to happen, Umiyama screamed out in terror. This spooked the men for a brief second, allowing him to run away once more, this time out into the woods. The men called out to him, saying, We aren't going to do anything. We're not lying, so just come out. And for some reason, Umiyama believed them and came back out. Then they captured him for the third and final time. They stuffed some clothing in his mouth, tied his hands and feet together, and beat him with rocks. He still didn't die, begging for his life. This was when they poured the remaining gasoline on him and burned him alive. He struggled in pain and still begged for help, but he didn't get any. Somehow, he managed to get up and shamble to the front of the tunnel, but there he collapsed and died. The group of men made sure that he was dead and left the scene, heading back to Fukuoka City. There, they went to a bar and bragged to some other men, saying, We just killed someone, even set him on fire. Umeyama's body was discovered around noon the next day. Although it was hard to be specific given the state of his body, Umeyama's cause of death was determined to have been from the blood loss to his head. Seeing that the men had been bragging all over town, the murderers were captured and arrested shortly after. At their trial in Fukuoka Court in March 8th of 1991, the main man, who was only 19 years old at the time of the crime, was handed down a life sentence. He said, I never intended to actually kill him. This sentence is too harsh, seeking a reduction to his sentence. However, the judge rejected his appeal and responded with, The cruelty displayed here is unlike any other seen in similar cases. The defendant played a central role and so bears a heavy responsibility. The current rumors about the true Inunaki village began to appear on the internet in 1999. It was after this that the old Inunaki tunnel and the ruins of the village became a very popular sightseeing and ghost hunting spot. Online, people in forums spoke of what they knew about the place. November 2nd, 1999. I heard from someone that this village is a specially protected area where the police and the state can't intervene. Despite being a very famous area, TV signals stop at the pass. According to one theory, this village was subjected to severe discrimination before the Edo period and at some point it cut off all contact with the outside world and became self-governing. There is also talk that it harbors some dangerous people, but that's just speculation. November 6th. When I was in college, I went to Inunaki Pass, and there were both an old and new tunnel on the pass. There was no light, and I felt sick. November 8th. Inunaki Village used to be in that area, but it seems to have been submerged. When I asked a friend about Inunaki Village, he said, Oh, you mean that submerged village? It must have been filled with water with the construction of the dam. November 9th. I heard that there is a village that is not on the map. A small village that isn't on the map when you come across the narrow road that goes there. November 12th. Somehow, in a story similar to this, it seemed that there's an area around Mount Haruna in the Gunma Prefecture, where a manga about runners was based on, where you will crash your car and be killed if you enter. It's said that there is a satanic cult that owns a huge piece of land there, and it is said to be filled with dead bodies. 
November 13th. There is a religious facility run by a relatively famous group in that area. Criminal organizations often come and go. Then, an anonymous person sent a letter to a TV station called NTV with the title of The Village in Japan That Isn't Part of Japan. The writer explained that, while they didn't believe in ghosts, the Inunaki Ridge area was famous for them. The writer detailed a small path in the woods, very easily overlooked, near the side of the old Inunaki tunnel that grew more and more narrow as the path went on. Upon arriving at the end of the path, you would be greeted with the sign reading, The Constitution of Japan does not apply beyond this point. Their story went a little like this. In the early 1970s, a young couple was driving along the winding curbs in the mountains near the Inunaki Ridge. Trying to get from Hisayama to Miyakawa, they were left with no choice but to go through a narrow road going up the hills. Just before they came up to the old Inunaki Tunnel, their car died and they found themselves stranded back in the days before cell phones were a thing. They noticed that small path near the tunnel, so they left the car where it was and headed out on foot to look for help. After a while, they came across the infamous sign. Confused, feeling it must be a joke, they continued on into the village. Less than a half mile in, they started seeing small, ancient-looking homes. The houses were dark, worn down, and it seemed the place was abandoned. They didn't hear anyone around, even the sound of animals or even the wind. The only sign of modernity they saw was a white car that had been left to the elements. They remembered the story of a couple in a similar car that had gone missing about a year prior. The couple walked into the main road of the village in the near pitch black darkness. Feeling sufficiently creeped out, they decided to head back to their car and look for help in another direction. That was when someone suddenly came out and stood on the porch of a big gray building just in front of them. The man walked up to the couple, greeting them, saying that they loved to see visitors here, they just didn't like to see them leave. Then, in one quick motion, he cut the boy all the way from his neck to his navel with a sickle. The boy collapsed on the ground before he even knew what had happened. The girl tried to run back to their car before the man grabbed her. He lifted her up with one hand and threw her into the street, breaking her ribs. She did what she could to run to the nearest house, seeing something that they hadn't noticed along the way, a bunch of corpses hidden in the shadows between buildings. The woman then met her fate as well, thrown onto the ground next to the white car. The writer then detailed the insane villagers who lived there and urged reporters to go check out the area as soon as possible. This was the first time the modern legend of the Inunaki village was born, even though it had been a popular ghost hunting spot even before that. There are a number of legends and stories out there that give their truth behind the history of the village. A few of these rumors go as follows. Number one, the village was so overtaken by disease that the government cut it off from the rest of society to keep the disease from spreading any further, leaving them all there to die. Number two, the village was a leper colony, with society no longer wishing to engage with them due to their status. Number three, the isolationist views of the villagers eventually led to a drop in intelligence and a rise in inbreeding and degenerate behavior, with simple human norms and morality being long forgotten. Four, one resident of the small village, possibly that man with the sickle, killed everyone around him one night, leaving nobody but himself standing. Or we have number five, a cult took over the village, leading to cannibalistic rituals that doomed anyone from outside the village who managed to wander in. Some of the stories circulate around the building of the Inunaki Dam, which flooded the historical location of the village. It's said that, when agents from the energy companies weren't able to convince the residents to leave, they simply barricaded them into their homes, flooded the area, and erased them from existence. The old Inunaki Tunnel has since been sealed off from the public, with huge concrete blocks blocking the entrance. On the road, there's now a large gate that prevents cars from coming in, with cliffs on either side. Although difficult, some people have been able to climb around the mountains and squeeze in through the top of the tunnel to get inside. Speaking of all of this, people living in the village have said that, ever since the release of the Howling Village movie, this place has gotten even more popular to the public. Before the movie, there were already quite a few people coming along, but in 2020, despite lockdowns, the place was booming in popularity. The whole area, inside and outside the tunnel, is now full of garbage, graffiti, and all manner of possessions left behind by drunken partiers. People living nearby won't go anywhere near the tunnel, not because of the hauntings, but because of the gangs of unruly people coming and going around the area. One man living nearby told a local paper, Every day, young people hang out in the woods close to the tunnel. They are throwing away their trash where they stand, drinking and making a nuisance. We are scared to even go up there as it stands. Since the movie premiered, the police have had to come out to the tunnel over 182 times, up from zero in the several months leading up to it. 
The locals would prefer the area to be left alone, wishing that the area would lose its appeal as soon as possible. In February of 2020, the Fukuoka Broadcasting Corporation actually did send a group of journalists out to scout the area, working alongside the Miyakawa City Council. They claimed to have heard strange noises coming from the inside of the tunnel, noticing a drop in temperature from 12 degrees Celsius down to 9 while nearing the tunnel opening. However, cool air coming from the inside of a tunnel isn't very surprising. In the end, they had to conclude that they didn't really find anything. With the area now being gated off, the tunnel being barricaded, the frequent police patrolling, all sorts of security cameras, fences, and gates closing off the area, it's getting harder and harder to see the site. Maybe that's for the best, both for the locals and possibly even for your own safety. Once again, thank you for watching my video. This is the first time I've actually gone out to a location and filmed footage for the purpose of a video. I actually first heard about this location from Windagoon's Conspiracy Theory Iceberg video, thinking, I'm near that area, how have I never heard about this before? So I've decided to go give it a look. So if you found this interesting, please give me a like, it helps out in the algorithm, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Special thanks to Mary Melody on Twitter for making this cool fan art of my channel icon. Always appreciated. Follow me on social media as you want, I post stuff there, and I also have channel memberships open now. If you want to support the channel even further, I also have a Patreon account which I keep linked down in the description below. And speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got Jake Parsons, Rabid Snarf, Royal Pain and Ass, Kylie, Jada, Dana Hart, Anna B, Sunrider, Gabrielle Tansic, Lee aka Crust, Emilia Morales, George Lopez, Minitina, Ron Murillo, Travis Billings, Jason Whitehurst, Jim Dowell, Kimmy Leffel, Molina Lee Williams Haas, M. Pilato, Stephen Jamie Kramer, Max Swordguy, Hao Yang, April Diamond, Starfade, Elixir, Angie, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sass Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Adrian Lawley, Marsh, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lex Luther, Lux Alpaca, CSD, Scoochie Main, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. Thanks again to Scentbird for partnering with me on this video. Check out their links in the description below and scan that QR code. This has been your host Kyle, thank you, and good night.